said to me, pointed out how much of your business is done with your top hundred customers. Yes. And that you've even organized a kind of club for them. Can you explain that? Yeah. This was a fabulous concept. Yeah, we, um, like we, I, I believe in small tribes. Um, so if you read um, Seth Godin and, and some of these other authors, you know, having this really small nucleus of people that believe what you believe, and then other people will just start attracting to that and the tribe will get bigger. There'll be people that'll come along and not believe what you believe and you can't let that affect you. You just have to say, you're not part of the tribe that I'm trying to serve. So with that, we really concentrate on our top 50, top 100 clients for experience. So we, we use their names in marketing meetings, event meetings, buying meetings. Those names are the names that are always coming up because that's our tribe. Now, as our online business is growing, we're realizing that there's people just like Bob that we mentioned at our meeting. There's a Bob in California. There's a Bob in Atlanta. There's a Bob in New York City. So I'm out there just looking for Bobs, that's all. I'm just looking for guys named Bob that are like the Bob that lives in my neighborhood that we service really well. I don't care about all the other names that are out there and people will then be attracted to this nucleus. So we decided to go even further down and concentrate on like 10 men. So we went to them and we said, you know, you like to buy Isaiah, you love it as a brand, we want to start a membership. So. They said, what does it take to get in? I said, you have to support each made to measure by buying a sleeve, and then you have to buy you know, another sleeve during the season, and that keeps you in a membership for six months, then you have to repeat the next six months. So we had this first dinner, and, and it was the first dinner that, you know, of course we were gonna pay for as a company. We, we went to a, um, what are those panic room places? Escape room, yes, thank you. And uh, so we went to escape room, we had this beautiful dinner, and it was crazy because the whole table had these 10 men, they all were from different walks of life. So we had doctors and, and developers and all these guys, and all of a sudden we gave a toast. And one of the guys stood up and said, this is the best club ever. He's like, I've made it in my career to where I can afford clothes at this level. He's like, but I go to work and I can't brag about how expensive these clothes are. I, my family doesn't know that, that this jacket's $5,000. He's like, but, I, this group of men, I can be confident that everyone in this room knows that I spend this much on clothes. That, that th this, is, this is who I am. This is what I chose as how I made it. And I believe in the extreme luxury business despite the level of price. Because everything that we sell is luxury to somebody. Right? So when I was growing up, having an Izod um, Polo at $78 was extreme luxury because that is as much as we could afford. So don't forget, we're all in the luxury business, despite if you're selling $5,000 sport coats or $1,000 sport coat. They come to you because you are the pinnacle of what they can afford. So the club grew, and now they want other members to come in the club, and we're talking with Isaiah about having that club do other things. So now we're flying this group into New York in September, and we're celebrating our club here. Um, it's become a really phenomenal opportunity to where I now go to the airport in Grand Rapids and people are like, you guys are that place with that club. I need to get in that club. And it's like they're begging to buy things and they're not really begging to buy anything, they're begging to be a part of something. And I think that's what we all miss when we have our stores, is the old school way of having a store was there was like, there's windows and bricks and a door and somebody walks in and you're like, hi, how are you today? And they're like, fine. And then they walk around and then they leave and you're like, I don't get it. Neither do they, neither do they. Because they don't know who you are, what your tribe is, like what, what, are, what do you stand for and do your displays look like what you stand for? Um, are you speaking and telling the stories of those brands? But my core customer is a, a gentleman who is in his 50s, he likes shopping luxury, uh, he likes luxurious experience, he actually really doesn't even like his kid in our store and I like missed all that I like didn't listen for a minute and um, that's probably one of the craziest things you can do is is forget to listen maybe I had like a bout of ego where I just thought I'm just gonna do what I think is right and what the magazines say are right and what what society says is, is hot and, and, and working and all these influencers were probably influencing me as I was looking through Instagram and then I decided to stop listening to my core client for a minute and I decided to do what I thought would be next. Um, and and it, was, it was really a, a mistake for our company and not something that 
that hurt us because that luxury client forgave me and continued to shop because we bought everything for him, but we just thought we'd have this new client and, and um, it didn't work out that way. Um, this club thing and the extent that it's worked is, is amazing. Um, what would you say, I remember at one point we talked about the suit business and everyone says suits are dying and suits is such a tough part of the business today and yet you say that your suit volume has actually maintained itself. Can you yeah, it, elaborate? It, it has. I mean, um, there's always somebody new that needs a suit. Um, we've never had a very large suit business. I mean, I know some of your businesses are, are very high percentage in the, in the sleeve situation. Um, it's never been that way for us. I mean, we've been into sportswear for over a decade, you know, wearing jeans with blazers and things like that. We adapted to that immediately. Um, but there's always somebody that needs a suit, and, and um, we also include in suits formal. Um, I think formal is one of the most important categories you could possibly get into um, during this revolution of sportswear. Um, think of a man who buys um, nothing but cotton and linen, and he's buying all these, all these uh, very, very casual jackets. When he has to go somewhere special, he has to buy something special. So why not buy a dinner jacket? You know, why not buy, why not buy something that connects to his current wardrobe? Um, and, and so we've had a phenomenal evening business. Um, we buy uh, dinner jackets at all different prices, and um, and we buy tuxes, and we, you know, we that's suiting to us. But um, I believe suiting is going to make a comeback. I think we can always expect the next generation to be contrary to whatever we say is. And right now, suits are so not that I expect the next generation to come and say, we should wear suits when we go to work, we're taking work seriously, and it'll be a new generation, and, and, and I, I personally believe in that. How do you get the ticket price, the average sale up in sportswear to what it would be if, if it were a suit era? You... Um, storytelling. Yeah. I mean, if, if you go to a booth and, there, and there's no story attached to anything that you're gonna buy, run, run, don't buy it. Because if you don't have a story to repeat, that you can't go and repeat to your salespeople, and they go and repeat to the client, what the hell is the point? I mean, no one in this room right now needs clothes. If you need clothes, you have an issue. It's not a need. Yeah, you might. <laughs> so, but it's not a need. So we sell stories. That's what we sell. We sell a story that makes somebody say, um, oh my gosh, I feel so awesome that I bought this, that I'm part of this sustainable movement, or that I'm part of this um, really great uh, workplace at Brunello Cuccinelli in Salome, or I'm, I'm so happy that I'm actually wearing something that has the same DNA as 100 years ago. That's what the consumer wants to buy. Nobody wants to buy pants. They might want to buy sexy. Don't forget Always. that. But. <laughs> But that's a very good answer. And I am also always think of you in conjunction with creating an experience in this store. Can you tell a little bit about, is it just your event space that makes that so special? Your store is probably the most beautiful one in the country. Thank you. How does that fit into creating, making it an experience? Um, so an experience is going to a table and not seeing like 20 different jeans lined up. Um, that's not an experience. Um, that just makes no sense. Um, where are they going to wear that pant? And then what goes with what they're, how they're going to wear that pant? How does that then couple together? And you made that table an actual lifestyle. You know, don't be afraid to go to Hobby Lobby and buy stuff. Like they'll sell you trophies if that this looks like a dad table. You know, they'll sell you stuff that you can sit there and make it come to light. Make somebody go to a table and think this is LA. You know, this is California. So buy a little silk palm tree. But as far as like an in-store experience, like one night we had a make love event um, during the um, February uh, near Valentine's. So you could go up and you could make your own candles, you could make your own room spray. Uh, Creed was there pairing truffles with scents. Um, then we also had um, Alice and Olivia there and some other brands all creating this really unbelievable like make love event and it's like we had love stories there for women and, and we had bully only there for men and it was just it was really just a very special night but there was like three stations of interaction um, the night probably cost us maybe 2500 to 3000 the ROI on that it's it's unmeasurable it's how it's often, bizarre how often 
often do you do these type of major events? Um, we try to have at least one really, really major event a month, so almost 12 a year. Um, but we'll go to the extent of uh, cooking classes or, or um, somebody teaching um, how to make cocktails, like right in the store. I don't think it needs to be relevant to clothing. It doesn't have to be about clothing. It, we had a book signing once um, with, with Nigel Barker, and I, I couldn't believe 300 people were in line in my store to sign a book, and, and, and that just really blew my mind. But people need a reason to come to your store, and that's gonna be more important every, every single year, and, and I think you have to find those reasons. So if you know your tribe, and you know exactly who your client is, you can have empathy and then walk that event and say, is this person gonna connect with this experience? And then go out and explain that exact experience to the consumer. Um, I think not being open and honest with your client and with your tribe is literally a, a good way to sink. Absolute vulnerability as a retailer.